How's everybody doing? Good? You can hear me all right? All right. Well, thanks for coming. Um, I'm Fawn Patterson. If you don't already know me, um, I work with the Guild. I had the extreme good fortune of getting to do Margot's job for a couple of months this summer while she was out on maternity leave. I got to know a lot of you all, and uh, it's been really awesome. And uh, thrilled to be part of this conference, and I'm so glad that y'all are all here. So uh, you're here for sales and marketing, I hope. That's what we're doing, is the sales and marketing track. And um, as we get started, I really want to thank Tryon Distributing. They are the sponsor of the sales and marketing workshop track. So they're making it possible for us all to be here and bring um, some great stuff to you. So um, we're going to get started um, with Jen Hoverstadt. She is with O3 Creative. And um, Jen is a really smart person who knows a lot about uh, digital media, digital crafting your digital influence strategy is the name of her presentation. Um, but I guess I'll read her actual bio. Um, as the operations manager at O3 Creative in Raleigh, Jennifer Hoverstadt serves in a variety of business functions, including marketing, human resources, and project management. An attorney by trade, she has advised government leaders and business owners in restaurants, service, and technology industries. While industries have been diverse, one idea remains constant. Jennifer excels in protecting brands, decreasing business liabilities, and building strong teams. So I hope that you will help me welcome Jen Hoverstadt from O3. today. I'm going to bottle it down. So we're going to talk about crafting your digital strategy. Like Fawn said, I'm from O3 Creative. We're a digital communication firm in Raleigh. And what that means is we, we basically do everything from website design and development. That's how we were founded in 2007 to social channel management, any kind of writing that needs to get out there, anything that goes in the online space, in the internet, on the Twitters, on Facebook, whatever the case may be, we can take care of that for our clients. So what I'm going to walk you through today is basically a kickoff meeting that we would have with one of our new clients, where we start out looking at big picture, what are we working with, where do we need to go, what kind of frame of mind do we need to be in in order to achieve some of the digital goals that we have. Now, one of the pushbacks that I've received from brewery owners and reps that I've talked to in the past is, my beer speaks for itself. And I get it, I love probably all of your beer in here, and it does. And we're very fortunate here in North Carolina to have that amazing craft beer where the product really stands on its own. However, me, the person like me, your customers, that's not who we're reaching today in this conversation. Who we're looking after are bringing more people into your brewery, the people who have never heard of your beer before, the people who have not tried your beer because your beer is parked right next to the beer they always buy when they go to the grocery store. So that's who we're looking at in this conversation. Now as Fawn also mentioned, I'm an attorney. I'm used to interruptions. So if you find that you have a burning question midway through or right now, shoot the hand up and I can tell you we'll get to it later or I can answer it right then. So feel free to make this a conversation. So let's start off with this fun quote that I found from a article this year. The formula is simple. Sand, sun, and lime wedges. What beer are we talking about? Corona. Corona, yes, which has also been labeled America's worst tasting beer, but yet it sells so well. And that's because they're selling this idea. And notice that even in their advertising, there is nothing about how great it tastes, because it would probably be a lie. That there is nothing about the actual beer. It's about selling an idea, selling the story of Corona. You are now, when you see this picture, ignore the beer, right? You look right, right by it. I mean, it's like the color of the sun. You see the water. You see somewhere where your desk is not there. There's no people there. Log off, lime in, and find your beach. And the Corona's gonna be right there with you. So what we can take from this and where we want to start thinking is what is your story? What idea are you trying to convey with your brewery? Because the taste of your beer is not enough to convey that message that Corona is doing so well at conveying. The reason that Corona sells so much is simply because of an idea, and that's what we need to find for you. So maybe you know it right now. Maybe you have this very personal story with why you started the brewery, or why you decided to come work for the brewery, this very personal connection that you are able to communicate. 
Who knows that story? Does someone other than you know the story that you're trying to communicate? Because if they don't, it doesn't help sell your beer. And right now, the millennial market wants to connect with you on that very personal level. Really, millennials and beyond, that 25 to 45 year old consumer buys products because they can connect with you, because they make it personal with you. They want to support you, but they can't support you unless you tell the story. So while I don't believe any of your beer tastes like Corona, we need to go with this marketing strategy. So starting there, let's look at a case study. Bear Republic. A couple of years ago, Bear Republic hired a firm out of West Virginia to basically rehaul their, their digital presence. And as part of the start of this rehaul, they took some of this information from the Mintel uh, Craft Beer Drinkers study. Has anybody seen this study it came out in 2013? Probably one of the more recent studies for craft beer drinkers. 84% of these people want to discover new beer. They want to. They would actually love to try your beer. They have to hear about it first. 73% usually know what brand of beer they're gonna buy before they go to the store. And that may sound like a big number, but one out of four people don't know what they're going to buy before they get to the store. That means you can change their mind before they get to the store. 45% would try more craft beer if they knew more about the beer. And it's simple. Why is it so simple? Because everybody has a computer in their pocket. Every single person does, for the most part. I know it's a bit of an exaggeration, but almost every single person has a computer in their pocket. And so if they want to know more, they can find out more. You can either control the story, the idea that you're giving out to these consumers and potential consumers, or you can let the third party sites control the information that's coming out about your beer. You can let me go on Untapped and see what people are saying about your beer. I can go on Rape Beer, I can go on Beer Advocate, I can see what's being said about your beer, or you can tell me the story on your website and I don't have to go anywhere else. So back to Bear Republic. They started off with this information and a little bit more about the mobile, of course, in 2013, this information was fresh. These numbers have only increased now. 77% of mobile searches are in a location where people have a PC available, but they're not using it. They're using a tablet or a smartphone. It, in store included, so whether it's people at home or at a store, 84% of smartphone shoppers are turning to the web to help guide their purchase decisions. And so this just isn't with beer. I mean, I, I see it in Target and I see a toy that's on sale for my daughter. I'm like, can I get that cheap on Amazon? Or if I'm going to the store, maybe I'm in a total wine, I'm completely overwhelmed by everything I see on the shelves, but I know I have someone important coming to town this weekend and I'm supposed to buy like a really good beer for them. I'm gonna go on the internet because these searches take less than two minutes. But if they can't find the information they're looking for about your beer, they're gonna move on to the next beer. So again, it comes back to controlling the story and that's what Bear Republic wanted to do with Racer X. So here were the goals with Bear Republic. They wanted to increase their web visitation, their social engagement, their online sales and search results. Sounds easy, right? Wouldn't we all love that? I mean, this is, this is perfect. They also wanted to educate their consumers, so their current and potential about the brewery, about their beer, about what they were doing. So th this was the foundation. And these are a bit vague. As we move forward, we'll talk more about streamlining those goals. Um, but they had some big goals to achieve here. So what did they do? They needed to improve their SEO. Who knows what SEO is? Okay, got some people in here. So optimization, where you're showing up on the Google rankings, and it means a bit more than just where you rank. A lot of people think it's just about showing up page one in Google. That is super important that there is so much that goes into making sure you are landing there on that page and that you are highlighting the phrases that are going in to the Google search. So they wanted to, to improve their SEO. So at the time, Bear Republic had one page for all of their beers. So you can see all their beers, nice and neat. What they did was they took these beers and made individual pages. This increased the amount of language that was on their site, so it helped increase their SEO. And you can see here, 96% increase of organic traffic from Google just by creating individual pages for the beer. 81% more visits to their website because of these pages, and 191% increase in page views 
because they increased the number of pages and they were allowing people to go exactly where they wanted to go rather than one big page full of information. They also wanted to improve education, so they created videos about history of the brand, the brewing process, company's philosophy. Who's currently using that right now as part of their digital strategy? Maybe YouTube, maybe Facebook videos, anything? Okay, we've got one, two, three, four. Awesome, okay. Um, I, I've seen a few of the breweries, and I'm not sure who all is in here, but I've seen a few of the breweries do an extremely uh, extraordinary job in creating these videos. And a lot of times as business owners, and what I've found is coaching business owners, not only in marketing, but just generally speaking, you want to wait until it's perfect. But that's the great thing about social media and the web. It's okay to put something that's semi-perfect out there. If you take your iPhone and you shoot a video of what you have going on on any given day, that's fine, put it out there, put it on Instagram. We'll talk about social later. But that's why we carry computers in our pockets because we have this access. It doesn't need to be something where we hire this full big video production crew and make it look perfect and like Hollywood. We just need to get the videos out there. So Bear Republic did that. They also did an untapped campaign around the beer. Specifically, they created a special badge. So when people had the beer, did you have yeah. a question what that cost? I do not know what it costs. That's a great question. That's a great question, but that's what they did. And then obviously for them, it was part of their budget. So they knew that going in. But look at this, they had 7,000 unlocks of their badge for this particular beer. So they could track who was drinking the beer, they could see what was going on. They had almost 2,500 social posts as a result of unlocking the black badge with a social share of just over 35%. And the total reach of those social share posts over 780,000 in reach, which is huge. Now, I don't like to focus solely on numbers with social media. That doesn't guarantee quality, but that is a big number, and a big number of potential impressions that went out over Twitter through Untapped. And then finally, uh, this particular firm worked with Bear Republic's marketing team on strategies for growing and engaging fans through social media, so that included Facebook, it included some Facebook advertising, which is very cheap and easy to do, Instagram, and then the creating more of that social presence for their brew pub. They created a separate social presence. That's not always the best route to go for breweries, especially if you're a small brewery and you have the brew pub, everything's right there. But if you have two distinct personalities, it's okay to separate it, and that's what they did. So what happened? They studied this over a year. Over the period of a year, the website traffic increased by 74%. The organic search, so just typing into Google what people thought maybe they were looking for, increased 72%. They did not pay for any of those people to come to their site. It was all strictly organic, unpaid, free traffic. Visits from social referrals increased over 250%. The Brew Pub, remember they created that separately, that Facebook page increased over 2,000%, and then their e-commerce sales on their website increased threefold. This was all because they sat down with a digital plan, they had specific goals, and they knew how to grow it out. Grow it out. One of the things that we like to do, and I've certainly been guilty of this before because we're in this generation where we can access everything through the internet. So we think if we put it out there, it's going to magically, you know, uh, just grow and spiral and we'll be like, yes, one of the best questions we get as a digital communications firm is, hey, make me something viral. Okay, it doesn't work that way. You know, like Christmas Jammies, the Holderness family out of, out of Raleigh, the Green Room Communications, who we think very highly of, they created Christmas Jammies, jammies having no idea it would go as crazy as it did. And it did. It just happens that way. But you have to put work out there that you're proud of, that's a quality product that you're willing to share and that other people will be willing to share, and that's how it happens. So where do we go? How do we take learning from Corona, sharing our story, sharing our ideas, taking this Bear Republic case of how they specifically looked at their digital strategy and were able to have noticeably impressive results? What do we do? We start with our people. We start with our customers. We have to figure out who our customers are and why they're coming into the brewery, why they're drinking our beer. If we don't identify those people, then really, I mean, who are we sending our message to? It's kind of like direct mail. Who loves giving direct mail? Anybody? Yeah, I didn't think so. 
But that's what we do when we don't know who we're sending our message to. We're literally sending a direct mail out and just hoping it sticks with someone and someone pays attention to it. Here's a little bit more, more facts and figures about your craft beer drinkers. 50% express interest in locally made beer. Awesome, I mean, I think we know that about North Carolina. People are very proud of the beer we have coming out of North Carolina. 25% are interested in purchasing, purchasing craft beer where it was brewed. So when they come see you, you know, if, if I live on the coast and I'm coming to the mountains, I'm interested in purchasing that mountain beer, vice versa. 39% are influenced to purchase a craft beer if it has a personality to which they can relate. Who feels like their beer has a personality? Anybody? Okay, a few of you. Who puts that personality out there on the internet? Okay, a few of you, good. Every single one of you should have your hands up though because otherwise people don't know how to connect with you. If your beer doesn't have a personality, why would someone buy it? Because then it just blends in with the noise. You know, craft beer, at least in North Carolina, because we have so many amazing craft beers, starts to become a little bit kind of like our, all of our social media platforms. People try them out, they see what works for them, they maybe stick to something because they like it, they enjoy it, they know who they can connect to. But if they can't connect with your beer, they're not going to continue drinking it or continue recommending it. So that's a huge number. 39% are influenced based on the personality to which they can relate. So in the marketing world, we call this personas. We draft a persona and we do this with all of our clients at the beginning of a marketing project. Because again, we have to know who we're reaching out to. And these are people that are already coming and buying your beer. They're already in the breweries. They're already at the grocery stores. So I did a little bit of brainstorming for you. This is how I would break down at least some of your major categories. And depending on where you're located, depending on maybe where your beer is being distributed, this may change a little bit for you. But first we have our on-premise in-house guests. Right, we have the people who are coming to your breweries, whether it's during the weekdays, on the weekends, those two personas may look incredibly different. We have to serve them and speak to them in different ways, possibly. Of course, we have your families who are coming to some breweries. I know as a mom, I'm paying attention to which breweries I can go and not feel bad that my daughter may kind of freak out a little bit because I have the opportunity to be outside or whatever the case may be. And then of course, we have the singles who are maybe looking to go to their brewery because they know there's a big singles thing there and they can meet people and they can talk to people and they know kids won't be there. It just depends on who you have coming on premise in house and it could be both of these. So you may be talking to them the same way, that's okay. Just making sure that you're identifying those two personas, three personas, whatever the case may be. Then we have the people who are in house off premise. And I think the first time I noticed this a couple years ago when I went to Mystery in Hillsborough, I saw this guy come in with his growler Fill it up, turn around and leave. And I was like, I mean, I had driven there from Raleigh, but I was like, why did they leave? This is such a great place to hang out. But not all of your people are going to stay. They just want your beer and then they want to go home. So you got to figure out how to reach out to them. And then of course you have your off-premise customers. So those are the people who are buying your beer in the grocery stores, they're buying your beer in the bottle shops. Again, you lose a little bit of your message with your off-premise people because you don't know how those stores are communicating about your beer. So you have to control as much of that message up front to your off-premise personas because you want to make sure they get the information that they need that you want them to have before someone else comes in and provides other information. So I will provide these slides to anyone who needs them. This is a rather large checklist, but this is what we're looking for with those persona profiles. We are literally looking at the person. We're not looking at necessarily why they're coming in, what they're drinking when they get there. We're looking at the person. What role do they play in life? Do they work full time? Do they have a few businesses? Are they blue collar workers? What do they have going on in their day to day? What industries are they in? You know, do you find in Raleigh, we have a highly educated population. So are they working downtown at law firms? Are they working for the government? Or maybe you're in rural North Carolina, are they farmers? Are they people who spend their days outside and come to your brewery to relax? Or you know they're picking up your beer to go home and relax after a long day work? What are their goals in life? What are they responsible for? Do they have kids? Do they have pets? You know, what, do they have a lot of weight on their shoulders with whatever they have going on? What are their challenges? Do they have challenges with time? Do they have challenges with means? Are you in a poor area of the state? 
What about watering holes? Where are they? If they're not coming to a brewery, where else are they going? You know, in Raleigh, we can identify some big shopping centers. Cameron Village, right? Are they Cameron Village shopping? Or are they North Hill shopping? Or even better, are they Triangle Town Center shopping? Because those of you in Raleigh know, those three different populations are very different and distinctive. And chances are wherever you are, it's also similar. But you can look at that wherever they're going, wherever they're spending their extra time, wherever they are willing to travel out to. What's their personal background, age, family, education? And then of course their shopping preferences. Are they shopping through Amazon? Or are they actually going out to purchase certain things? Are they shopping at bottle shops? Or are they going to the grocery store? Are they going to Food Lion? Or are they going to Whole Foods? All of these questions make up the personas that you're creating. And again, this just tells you more about the person. So, do a little example persona. You may recognize her, her name's Jennifer. It's me, a handful of years ago. That's my lovely husband, Carl. Um, so, for example, say, say for me, um, I, I visit a multitude of breweries in the Raleigh area, and if they were like, hey, yeah, you're a persona, here's what I'd tell them. Early 30s, married, one kid, two dogs. What does that tell them? Well, one, we got a lot, a lot going on at my house, but on the weekends, I'm gonna wanna take my daughter out wherever I go. On the weeknights, maybe my husband and I need a date night. We're, we're coming out because, you know, we just gotta get out of the house, we gotta get away from everything, all the craziness, we meet after work. Dogs, maybe I wanna be somewhere where I can be outside, where I can walk to, perhaps. I have a corporate job, I supervise a team, I have power over budgets at home and at work. What does that mean? I can throw some money at you. Exactly, yes, my man in the back. I can throw money at you, not only from a personal standpoint where I control some of the dollars that are being spent in my house, but I control the dollars that are being spent at work. So when we have our holiday party next week, which beer am I gonna choose? We have so many, you know? There you go, right? <laughs> it's my man in the back, he knows, he knows. So I'm also actively involved in industry associations. I'm around a lot of people. I didn't put it on here, but that means I'm also on Twitter. I'm sharing what I'm doing. I'm sharing that I'm here today. I'm sharing what beers I'm drinking when I'm drinking them. I am free advertising for you. Challenged by lack of time, and I don't like to waste time. Is anybody from Trophy Brewing in here? Okay, good. I love Trophy Brewing. I love their food. I love that they use Instagram to tell me what is on their menu. I hate that I have to wait for a table so I don't go very often. That is because I'm challenged with time. I do not have time, I do not have 45 minutes to wait and hover over your table. If I don't know what food truck's gonna be at your brewery on Friday night, I'm not gonna know it, go and take a chance that I don't know what's there. If you were posting your food truck on Facebook for the past three months, and all of a sudden it's gone because it moved to your website, but you didn't tell me it moved to your website, if I don't see it on Facebook, go on to the next one. I got another brewery down the street where I can go visit because I know what food truck they're going to have there. So that, that is me, that is this persona, and I know that fits a lot of your other personas. Preferred digital interactions, as we already went over, so I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on all these platforms. You can communicate with me easily, I just need you to communicate with me. Chances are I'm kind of in this higher uh, or older millennial, Oregon Trail millennial, I think is what I've been called before. I'm in this older millennial, and it, yes, I think it's great, it's so true. Um, I'm in this older millennial group where I know what I'm doing online. I just need you to communicate with me online. That's what I need. And, and I can tell you truthfully, while this is a persona that you can replicate, you may be like, yep, this is someone that we have frequently coming to our brewery. This is someone that I'm frequently serving. I will tell you, it, nothing is more frustrating than that kind of failed constant communication. And that's why I mentioned trophy, because I know Every day at four o'clock, I can get on Instagram and I can see what they have on tap, I can see what their pizza specials are. That's the kind of consistency you wanna use with your customers. And these are the kind of personas you wanna build out. Don't like, Fred, I have clients who worry that, oh my gosh, if I don't build the perfect persona, my whole digital strategy is just gonna be shot and this will be a waste of time. This should take you 20, 30 minutes. Talk with someone else in the organization, someone else who knows what else is going on. This should not take a lot of time. This should just give you that ground level information so that way when you start talking really big social media ideas, really big website ideas, you can come back and be like, wait, if we look at Jennifer's persona, is this who we're catering to or do we just like the idea of that? You don't want to do anything where just you likes the idea. 
you are not the one that's spending money wherever you are. Do the research, do a little bit of background work, and continue to focus on your customer. So the second thing is know your goals. So we know who we're serving, we have an idea of our story, what are our goals and whatever digital strategy we're going to move forward to. Now, here's the thing about Bear Republic that I did not mention at the end of the case study. Bear Republic hasn't updated anything since 2013. So everything, when I go back on their YouTube to see about what all they did, it says their videos are two years old, which says to me they thought that they could do something at that time in 2013 and it was awesome, they got great results, but your results are as only as good as your sustainability. And these digital strategies will change, your focus will change, your goals will change, that's okay. But just know that your goals, if I say my goals for Q1 2016 are this on Facebook, this on Twitter, this, we're building a new website. As soon as that's done, you move on to the next piece of your digital strategy, creating a new thing. It's always changing, always ever evolving. It doesn't stay the same. So that's why your goals are important. And really, I don't want to control your goals. I don't want you to think that I know all the goals best because honestly, I don't. Each and every one of you have different goals. This is just an idea of what maybe you're going after. Maybe it's the size of your fan base. Maybe you want to go after mentions. Maybe you want to do um, the online reputation management where you increase the number of positive reviews that are on Yelp, Google. Maybe you want to traffic more people to this brand new website that you have because remember, they don't know it exists, they're not gonna go. So maybe you're going to focus on sending all of your social channels to your new website. Maybe the number of conversions. If you're selling something on your website, you're going to spend a specific amount of time focusing on increasing those sales and creating a strategy around it. Lots of different ideas. All of this is online. All of it requires you to have a goal and a specific built out strategy to get there, at least to be successful. So let's start with the website. Who here has a website they're really proud of with their brewery? Okay, a few people, awesome. And as I was looking, I went through our list of members. I was looking at all of your websites. There are a few out there that are notable and I'm like, yes, I can get the information that I need and that is awesome. Again, I come back to the reasoning that I started this presentation with. Brewery owners, reps have told me, I don't need a website because people drink my beer. They're not looking to the website about my beer. Yes, they are. And I'll tell you more about that as we go on. People are looking at your website. Your potential employees, potential customers, potential vendors, people who potentially want to partner with you are looking at your website and judging you based on your website. So what does this look like? The website is not designed for you. So it should not matter what you think of it. You should be proud of it. But the website is not designed for you. It should be designed for your current customers and really probably more importantly, your potential customers if you're gonna rank those out. Is it user friendly? Which means, does your website look like GeoCities or Angel Fire circa 1995, 1998? Or can I go on there and quickly find the information that I need to find? You know? You guys have seen it. I know you're laughing up here, but you've seen it. You know it's out there. And it's because you're trying to save some money. And I get it. But now with the, the offerings of Squarespace, where you can get a low cost, low budget, neat, clean website, it may not do everything that the, the person who spent $10,000 on their website will get you, but it will get you something that looks a lot better than what you have. I encourage you to go out and explore it. We want that user friendliness. We want to easily be able to find information because again, if they don't find it through you, they'll find it through someone else and you have it controlled what that other person has said. And I, I can't tell you enough, um, I do a weekly podcast on craft beer on Thursdays at nine o'clock, and I'll, I'll get to that more later. But when I'm trying to find information about the beer I'm drinking or about the beer that I know will be reviewed on the podcast, if I can't find it on the brewer's website, it kills me because then I go to Beer Advocate and you know you get the question mark with maybe this is true or you find different pieces of information that conflict with each other. I hate that because the brewery could just tell me what's right. Control the information for me. Let me read it directly from the website. Mobile first. Whose website is mobile friendly, mobile responsive in here? Okay, good, a few of you, yes, awesome. So not only is Google looking at that when they're optimizing your website and the ranks, you're actually getting graded on that now when Google crawls through and produces that list of page one rankings that you find. 
but majority of people are actually accessing your website through their phones. So if I have to zoom in and figure out which button I'm supposed to press, I'll probably go on to the next website. Probably go on to find something else that's better. If you look at the new ncbeer.org, it is now mobile friendly. And that's what they were going after. I know, it's awesome. It's wonderful. That's what you need. You need your customers to easily be able to click and find what they're looking for on a phone or on a tablet. You need consistently updated information. So again, I was really impressed with Bear Public's case study. It has been updated. I can notice that. It needs to be optimized like we just talked about. And also it's a potential recruitment tool. The best thing about my company is that I have to do very little recruiting because our website speaks for itself. Our social media speaks for itself. People send me resumes when we don't even have jobs open to them because they want to work with us because what they saw on Instagram, what they saw on Twitter, what they see on our website, the work that we've produced. Recruiting takes time, doesn't it? For those of you that have to hire, interviewing takes time. If you can make it easier to get those high quality candidates to say, yeah, I think I could be a part of that team. I should just shoot them over my resume, tell them I like what I see. Hello? It's your 24-7 employee. That is your website. That should be the mentality of your website, an employee that works all day, every day for you. It will require an investment up front. It will. Whether you go with a, a lower-end firm, higher-end firm, medium-end firm, whatever the case may be, it will require an investment. But just know that's going to continue to work for you as you move forward. Be social. Who's here? On, who's on social channels? The brewery is, yay, all the hands, awesome, that is great. That is exactly what we want to see. So when you are on social media, we have a lot of different platforms we can choose from. And I know with a lot of my small business clients, I see them, they're like, okay, I'm gonna put a Facebook up, I'm gonna put a Twitter up, put an Instagram up, and then it's there. People can see it if they wanna see it, they may not update it, and that kind of defeats the purpose. So let's talk about some of these platforms and why it may be valuable to you, uh, what kind of value it can bring to the brewery. You do not need to be on all the social platforms. You should not be on all the social platforms unless you have someone who is dedicated to updating all of those social platforms. So first, let's look at Facebook. Facebook is used for conversation and regular updates. Conversation means back and forth. So if I am on, let's say, Foothills Facebook page, if I liked it, and I, you know, I, I type something like, hey, when is sexual chocolate coming, coming out? When is it gonna be released? How am I gonna line up for it? If you leave me hanging, kind of defeat the purpose of Facebook. You know I have a question. You know, here I am wanting to buy your beer, and you didn't answer my question. It's an easy way to provide customer service so people aren't calling you, so they're not emailing you. So having someone who's dedicated to answering and responding to those Facebook conversations, Twitter, connecting with your influencers, streaming information. You can find out who your brand ambassadors are through Twitter and you can make them feel awesome. You can send them a free pint glass, send them a bumper sticker, retweet them. It's free. Retweet an influencer. You will make them feel like a million dollars. And so let's look right here. 33% of people on Twitter will follow a brand. And I believe that number is over 46 million people will follow a brand on Twitter. Why won't, why won't they follow you? You know, why, why haven't they followed you? Is it because you're only tweeting once a week, once a month? That doesn't work with Twitter. Twitter should be a constant flow of information. I typically recommend three to four times a week, at least, ideally, one or two times a day. That's, that's when we tend to see the best conversations get going on Twitter. That's when people really value it. 663%, and it's gonna be hard to read, increase of Twitter users, Asking for business recommendations in the last two years. I can tell you, I've, in the past month, I've asked people what beer I should be drinking on my podcast. There's a lot of beer to choose from. So I'm really interested to know, when we have International Stout Day on the podcast, what beer do you recommend? People send me information. That's how I get information. You can be asking those same questions. Hey, what's your favorite of our beers? What's your favorite of our seasonal beers? What are you most excited about for us in 2016? It's a little bit of free market research. And again, you can interact with it and make these people feel special. 67% of Twitter users are more likely to buy from the brands that they follow on Twitter, 67%. Over half of the people 
that follow you are more likely to buy from you. It's gonna come in the back of their head. No, but here's the thing. If you're not tweeting regularly, consistently, you're not popping up on their Twitter feed. So they don't know what you're saying, because you're silent. So make sure you're saying something so you're always in the forefront of their mind. I would encourage you to do like, you know, a little, little bit about, hey, have you tried this beer today? You know, just give a little shout out to it. Is there a question back? Yeah, there's a question about uh, theory on the life of a tweet. Is today five, 10 minutes? Like, if you really need to get something out, to tweet multiple times over a couple of days at different times of the day? Yeah, you know, it, so here's the cool thing with Twitter is that Everyone's going to see it, which is unlike Facebook. Technically, everyone could see it, I guess I should say. More people will see a tweet on Twitter than a post on Facebook because there is no algorithm on Twitter like there is on Facebook. But you bring up a great point as far as the time of day goes. Um, I would encourage you to utilize a buffer, maybe, for tweets so you can find out when you're getting those responses that you're looking for. When is your audience more likely online? Now, I have found in my work with small businesses and where we're trying to um, engage particularly that 25 to 45 year old age range, anything after three o'clock is typically better. Three to nine o'clock, that's also the time when your people are getting off work, when they're thinking about what they're gonna drink at night. So reminding them there, there's nothing wrong with tweeting the same information, but I would change the way it's tweeted. So, you know, if, if you're gonna focus this week on um, maybe a specific release of your beer, yeah, keep it in front of them, because you're right, the life of the tweet, you don't know when that person's gonna see it, depending on how many people they're following. The average person on Twitter, I believe, follows 115 accounts, that's average, so most of us probably follow more than that. The average person doesn't tweet at all, 40% of people don't tweet at all, they lurk, and they just read information. So while your people may not be tweeting, they're looking for you to tweet. So yes, that is a great point. Make sure that if it is something very important, like for example, if you wanted people to know you were gonna be here, you should have been tweeting that out multiple times. Like, hey, I'm getting in the car, I'm driving to Winston-Salem. Hey, I'm here in Winston-Salem. Oh my gosh, I've arrived. There's, you know, this person speaking, it's awesome. Like, those are the kinds of things where you're saying the same thing, you're communicating the same idea, you're just saying it a few different ways. Uh, and we'll get to some best practices here shortly. So Instagram, connecting with your influencers through pictures and video. Again, another great way, especially those digital natives, so that 21 plus, as well as um, the, the millennial generation, they're all on Instagram. One of the questions I receive frequently, as well as Facebook dying, eh, you know, it's a toss up. Like the, that age group, the 21 to 35, not as likely to connect with you on Facebook as they are on Twitter and Instagram because their parents are on Facebook and they're like, I'm not gonna be on Facebook, I don't need my mom to see what I'm doing on the weekends. That's fine. Instagram and Twitter are great avenues to go and really it allows some more connection that way. YouTube, um, is anybody from Noda in here? Yeah, Noda has an awesome YouTube page. I love the Noda YouTube page and if you're like, I don't really know what to do for videos, go look at Noda. They have an awesome way of using videos, everyday videos, um, where really all they're doing, Chad's up there talking about the beer, what they have going on, telling people you know, about the beer, why they should drink it, what it tastes like. That's awesome, and it connects them with Chad when they see the videos. And again, you can use that with your iPhone. You do not need some kind of fancy video equipment to do that. Other platforms, we have LinkedIn. And when I showed um, our CEO this presentation, he was like, LinkedIn? Why is a brewery gonna be on LinkedIn? Full Steam posts their jobs on LinkedIn. You better believe they get a higher quality of candidate from those job postings than if they just posted it on their website. So I'd encourage you to have a presence. You don't, unless you're doing something that is perhaps, um, you know, it, like uh, the Born Yesterday series, uh, with the Born Yesterday beer and everything that they did regarding, uh, you know, how we made it, what this looks like. Um, in order to call it born yesterday. You know, that maybe be something on LinkedIn where the caliber of people on LinkedIn are interested in learning more about that process um, from a business standpoint. Otherwise, I would just encourage you to engage with a level where you know you can receive some high quality candidates. Pinterest, of course, photos. You may have a source for it that's not something I would necessarily push with this community, but that's what it is, it's a collection of photos. What I see a lot of people do is, oh, I gotta be on Pinterest. And they don't have to be on Pinterest. If you don't find a reason to be on Pinterest, 
don't be a Pinterest, Snapchat, Vine, also two up and coming social platforms. Um, I'll be honest, I'm still trying to figure out Snapchat as far as the value goes. There are a lot of professional marketers that would tell you right now, be on Snapchat, be on Snapchat, your people are on Snapchat. And that's probably true, but I would encourage you to make sure that it is worth your time to make sure you have a Snapchat, Snapchat strategy, say that five times fast, before you start using it. But it, it could be very valuable. Finally, Periscope and Blab. And you can see here, I don't know, can you guys recognize the top, top left box of, of these pictures, this group of pictures? No? Okay. It's Leif Larson from Old Hickory. And so this is my Thursday night podcast on Blab. Who's heard of Blab? No one! Oh my gosh! Okay, well, all of you are invited to be guests on my podcast. I'm serious, <laughs> not joking. Um, what Blab is, Blab was started, gosh, I think in June of this year. So who's heard of Meerkat and Periscope? Yeah, okay, live streaming. So that we're in the same family right now. So um, live streaming is a great way to bring people into your brewery, allow them to connect with people that are in there, um, just allow them to, to see what's going on behind the scenes. Blab allows you to actually talk to them. Blab is what Google Hangouts should have been when Google Hangouts was created. So what we did, this was actually our, our first episode that these two things don't tie together. You can just see we did one on Stout Day. Um, the, the picture of the, the four of us here, so it's myself, I'm in Raleigh, we have a woman in Minneapolis, Minnesota, obviously an amazing craft beer scene there, and then the guy top right is um, in New Jersey. So we're all talking about beers. I push North Carolina beers like crazy on this thing, and people love it because they've heard about them. Typically it's not distributed where they are, but they love talking about them. So Leif came on from Old Hickory, he's the, the triangle rep, and we were talking about the Imperial Stout. And he was just talking about what Old Hickory was doing. And you know, and it, it, you have to say like, hey, Minnesota, New Jersey, you can't get our beer there. But when you come to North Carolina, you can. When you're traveling through, when you're traveling on our highways, keep this in mind, you've heard about us. Life maybe spend an hour, maybe an hour of his time, probably 30 minutes, hour of his time, okay. And he told everybody about Old Hickory. You don't have to do it as owners, but you can get your reps on there. And I'm not saying my podcast is the best way to go. I know we got 919 Beer in the house. We have lots of other amazing podcasts, live streams, NC Beer Guys is here. There's so many different ways to connect with an immediate community, an immediate audience through live streaming. All you have to do is ask them, how do you get your beer on there? That is it. Because I, I will go and ask them and I'll be like, okay, I'll drink you know, whatever beer tonight. But if you come to me and say, hey, would love for you to drink this on your podcast, sure, why not? Give me the idea. But there's a lot of us doing this in North Carolina, so I encourage you to utilize this platform. And of course, Periscope runs through Twitter. It's very easy for you to utilize. So real quickly, because we're running out of time, best social practices, create your brand guidelines. If you want someone to ask on this, and I didn't ask him if I could say his name, but I will. Sean Wilson has done this at Full Scene. Sean started their social media practices. He wanted to keep a certain voice. He created brand guidelines for the people that would be running their social strategy. Post, as I've already told you before, your social media is only as good as how often you're posting and the quality of your posts. Respond, respond to your people on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, especially when they have a problem or they say something incorrect about your beer. Fix it right then so everybody else can see it. Use pictures, show people what it looks like, show people what the bottle looks like, show people what the line out the door looks like for a limited release. And of course, identify your influencers and connect with them. So if you would like to connect with me on any level, if you have, I know I kind of had to push fast through the rest of this presentation. Seriously, would love to answer any of your questions. If you have ideas that you've been thinking about but you're not sure how to get this out there, please let me know. You can find me on Twitter, Periscope, and Blab, at jen one in Hoverstad. Again, I work for O3 Creative. That is the letter O and the number three. See my email there, jennifer at weareo3.com, or weareo3.com is also our website. So any, let's see, uh, maybe yeah, one question? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Have okay, one or two questions, yeah. Uh, so, you know, as a brewer, we've kind of been discussing how we get around, there's some legal things that we can and cannot do on yes. social media. What are some best practices to kind of maybe find those loopholes or you know, promote our brand in a lot of on-premise locations. Mm -hmm. 
So I would say taking taking people into the day to day, like show people the day to day within within those parameters. However, so if, for example, what I would do, I would have your craziest ideas on paper first, and then come back and say, all right, you know what? Let's tweak this a little bit because we kind of overstep our bounds here. Get the crazy ideas out and then refine because that way you're actually going to be able to do if, if you start coming into there's nothing worse than a meeting where someone goes oh i have this awesome idea and you're like nope can't be done you've shot down an idea where you could have at least partially used it so i'd say for brainstorming purposes use that um always i would always recommend running those ideas where you're uncertain by an attorney just saying just want to make sure i'm not not overstepping any bounds here um, never hurts to have a second year there just on some of those ideas. But yeah, I would go big with the ideas and then tone them back to refine them the way you need to. Yes, sir? What's an example of what's out of bounds? I think it just depends. For you, I mean, what I'm seeing on, on Facebook and what I'm seeing that works, like for example, with, with Noda, um, just talking about the beer, you know, talking about what it is. Um, I think not necessarily out of bounds, but perhaps how you don't want to uh, show your brewery. You, you may not want, depending on your brewery, you may not want to be live streaming at 10 o'clock on a Friday night. If you have a rowdy group in there that's watching football or watching a hockey game, that's not so much a legal issue as it is, well, it could be a legal issue because you could be live streaming something someone's not supposed to be doing. But it could, it could be more like, this is not the story that my brewery wants to tell. People know it happens when you have alcohol around, but being very careful, um, particularly with the live streaming, who's going to be in those shots, making sure you are controlling your live streaming and that, that there is no chance that something could be going on in the background of live streaming that's not supposed to be going on. Other questions? Yes, sir. Common, I think the legal thing people might be referring to is you're not, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you can't say, hey, Check out Joe's bar tonight. My beer is on tap for two dollars five. Right. Yes. Right. Do. Absolutely. You can tell by your beer. You can't tell where you live. Exactly. Yeah. Is is there a way to kind of navigate that? I'm sure there is. <laughs> You're asking a lawyer. <laughs> I'm sure there's a loophole. I haven't had to deal with that particularly. Um, but you know, really, truly, though. Do you want, I mean, depend, depending on the circumstances, if you have the opportunity to bring the people in-house to you or to send them out and buy it, pull them in-house. You know, pull them in as much as they can. They'll go out and find your beer. They'll go out and find it once they figure out who you are and once they connect with you. Pull them in-house as much as you can. Yes, so I'll just follow up on that for a second. I think what you can do is put out really good content that your retailers can use. So you cannot tell them, right, go to Joe's Bar mm -hmm. because we're doing a tap takeover can't do that but what you can do is have really strong content that Joe's bar can pull from when they're saying we have you know so and so's beer on tap tonight if you're not giving them anything good to work with then no they're not going to do good promotion so I think that's where Absolutely. you can work with that but do if you're crafting a strategy where you want to know about what to do with those things I think the idea of consulting an attorney is not a bad idea if you yeah. really want to figure out how to promote that stuff but can't reps post not the company itself so like mystery can't put on their Instagram Jess is going to be at Lowe's Foods doing a tap takeover, mm -hmm. but aren't we allowed to say I'm going to be doing a tap takeover? And then I I don't know about brewery reps. I know distributor reps cannot. Right. right. But so the legal and finance track is right next door. <laughs> <laughs> so if you all have questions That's for a lawyer, question. yeah. just That's walk next question. door. Yeah. Yeah. Like yes, sir. who can say whatever they want to about your beer. Connect with them, shoot them a message, say, hey, did you see so-and-so's out? You know, connect with them, you're friends with them, send that private message, and then let them be like, headed down the street to grab this bottle, you know, that's 
I'll let use those influencers. They want to be your friends. Yeah. What, just real quick, what about retweets? If a restaurant says, hey, we're going to have a bombshell takeover, whatever, are you allowed to retweet as a brewery? Or, or brewery? That's a good question. Yeah, I wouldn't think so, based on, based on the information I was just shared. Because it's coming from your platform. Because it because suddenly that becomes your information. You are controlling that content that comes out. Ah, good questions. Any other, any other questions? All right, well again, feel free to contact me. Would love to connect with any and all of you and thank you very much for coming this afternoon.